Hello, and almost welcome to the stream. Oh, I did that correctly this time. Oh, or did I? Hang on, I might have missed it. I did mess it up. Because this is the window that's supposed to come up when I start the stream. But you know what? Let's face it. I always mess up. Addy the Redhead, wonderful person, was just talking to her. You should go watch, watch her when you're not watching me, or even while you're watching me. She's on right now. Go watch her. I don't, um, I don't begrudge you not watching my stream. It is terrible. Um, I don't even like watching my own streams afterwards, but I'm beginning to not like watching my streams while I'm actually doing them. So, so pretty, good, pretty good shit here. Okay, so uh, last time we ran into a problem that we could not compute Mars's position uh, beyond the bounds of ITRF 93, which ends in 2037, uh, the year 2037. Uh, so I've got three potential ways of fixing this, which I have not put in order here. Uh, one is, I think if I remove ITRF 93 from the kernel file, which means I'll have to create a new kernel file, uh, it'll automatically use IAU Earth, the model that is less accurate but can is valid for a longer period of time. The first thing I'm going to try, though, is instead of trying to get the position of Mars, which is 499, I'm going to try to get the position of the Mars Berry Center, which means the center of mass of uh, Mars, Phobos, and Deimos, which, by the way, is about four to five inches away from the center of Mars. It's a very, they're very close, because Phobos and Deimos have very little mass. And the final, uh, the final thing that I probably won't do, because I'm very, very uh, lazy, uh, is to just, I know I can get the J2000 coordinates, I'm pretty sure I can do that, and it's a fixed transformation from J2000 to Eclipse J2000 uh, because that is, a, that is a fixed frame at a given point in time. And I can do the transformation myself. All of this is to bring us back to doing a linear interpolation of the declination and right ascension of Mars and other planets so we can put them into JavaScript, so we can put them on top of a uh, star map that I have created but not actually, mount, not actually put online yet. So we're really basically just doing crap. All right, so let's go ahead and try the first solution. Um, actually, let's, oh, and one other thing is, oh, okay, hang on, shit. I did restart, I did cre recreate, oh, there we are. Why are there two of them? I did actually recreate, oh, fuck, what the hell? I did actually rebuild the VM a little bit so it would be, um, well, the goal was to make it uh, work better, but as you can see, clearly it is working less goodly. Uh, yeah, that's a word. Um, wow, that's totally... I'm going to have to kill both screens and restart. Wow. So that was not cool at all. What the hell? How did I break screen? Is my thing... Oh, you know what? My terminal might be... Uh, when I resized the terminal, I might have broken it. Um, oh, if you grab screen. Okay, good. So the very first thing here we're going to do is try to actually get back to um, where we were before. Reset should do it. A and when I say should, I mean it won't. Um, maybe the rows and column settings are not correct. That, that's not going to do anything. Uh, let's see. Reset. This is good shit. I managed to have broken more stuff. Wow. That's kind of amazing. Okay, let's go get rid of the X term entirely. This is going to be some fun here. I'm going to bring up an X term, and I will go ahead and make the font size huge, because I am huge. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not huge. Now let's see if we can get screen working. There we go. I'm going to exit out of screen. I'm going to try to make this bigger. That's what she said. <laughs> and then see if I can still get screen to work. But I don't, that might have been the thing that broke it. There we go. Okay, so I've really fucked up the machine. I'm going to make a note. Um, have really fucked up VM. Fix it. So that, I won't do that here and now, but uh, that means I'll need to get, a, get out. I had a kind of okay setup going, and I didn't like it because... Um, I forget why I didn't like it. It was actually pretty damn good. Oh, because of, of the Julia thing. Uh, we got Julia installed, and it's still here, thank God. I hope. If it isn't, I'm going to feel really bad. Um, yeah. And the problem was after installing Julia, I needed to uh, save the machine state again. Uh, and I saved it incorrectly, because I suck. Um, I suppose what I could have done is 
gone into the other machine state, saved... Well, I actually think that is what it did. So n never mind. In other words, I, I screwed this up. I screwed it up for a non-trivial reason. Um, I still suck. I could have sworn I had a screen bar at the bottom of this. Maybe not. Okay. Um, but anyway, I'll try to fix it later on. Okay, so now we don't even actually need to do that. BC any dump. Um... I really, really need to stop. Um, I'm tempted to do it on stream at a help at a help function. It's not that hard, actually. Um, okay. However, we're so nested, I'm not sure I want to do that. So let's go ahead and do the start date. Let's go ahead and create a new screen. Let's go ahead and do the start date at 2040, because that is what we know is going to fail. And, okay... We DC any dump minus one start equals this. We'll make the uh, end time like 10 seconds because it doesn't really matter. The, the We don't really care what we're getting. And minus minus delta equals one. Again, purely trivial. Uh, frame is eclipse J2000, which we might check to see whether just J2000 works. And the thing you were trying to track, first of all, let's confirm the error occurs by doing 499. Let's watch it fuck up. That did not fuck up. Well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> you know, the only thing I can think of is it has to cross that 2037 boundary uh, where, well, actually, let's see what, when it does end. Let's, uh, let's take a look here. That would be, like, really, really bizarre if it turns out that ITRF, um, let's see... 19, oh, there's another one, ITRF 93, and let's look at its comments. I think it goes to like 2037 something, but, um, oh, actually we can just look at the file itself, uh, da 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 da, it should say somewhere in here where it, where it expires. Uh, okay, oh well, fudge you. All right, well, let's 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 go. Let's go crazy, man. So we'll make 2040 the end time. We'll make 2030 the the beginning time. And obviously, we're going to change the um, the interval. And let's see. I guess technically, we'd actually just watch that to see where it. Now, um, 30. There's about 30 million, more than 30 million seconds in a year. But again. We were hoping for, fuck you, it worked. The only thing I can think of is maybe last time I did a clip date, which actually would depend on the on the model. Okay, well, we're going to go from 1970. It is Pomodoro time, but it's the first one, so I'm going to skip it. We're going to go from 1970 to fucking 2040. See how you like that? Screw you. Um... Alright, well it was 2101 last time that I did, that was the one that, that broke it, so let's, uh, let's at least use the same number that broke it, and if it doesn't break this time, I will be pissed off for some bizarre reason. Okay, yeah, there we go. Oh. Um, so we got as far as 29, oh my god. Wait. And that position is beyond 2100, because of the delta... know about this. I mean, if it's just skipping over because of the delta, we can fix that. So let's go to 2099. If this works, um, then the problem is extremely mild. Wait. Yo mama. Is that what I meant to do? Change the end time. So maybe it's just after 2100, which I actually don't care about, so th it's probably okay. Okie dokie. So. <sighs> I hate my life. Alright, let's go ahead and write it up here in the, uh, I think I already have it here actually, in the, um... <laughs> but I'll rewrite it, because you know, I'm an idiot. DC any dump to 
Uh, minus minus start equals. Now I, I'm going to show you how we, we're going to do this to fix this issue that we have. Um, you want to think I would have memorized the uh, the timestamp at the start of this century, and I do want to make sure it's UTC. But the whole machine's on UTC, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be a there we go the 10,957th day since uh, 1970. So this is like always what I'm going to be doing is my start minus minus end equals. Okay, so what we're going to do here. Oh, it was 2100 actually, but yeah, still bad. I'm going to take this number and subtract 60 from it because that means actually maybe I'll subtract 61 from it. So the very last minute will still be within um, will still be within the year 2099 and won't cross the border into uh, into 2100, which I think is the problem. Idelia minus delta equals 60 minus minus id equals 499. Go to temp Mars. Sent for because per century, and I'm hopefully I didn't store that. That would be kind of weird if it turns out the temp directory more. Oh wow, it is cool. Sucks to be me. All right, so we'll just overwrite it. I, in fact, I think it's a temp Mars sent one, so it wouldn't even be an issue. But you know, whatever. So while that's running, first of all, I want to see that it is running, and because it gives us so much wonderful data. We should, that's what I meant. Uh, we should be able to, oh, I was hoping it, one of the things it gave us was data in a format we could read. But apparently it's not doing that. This does not look like it's gotten very far. I think this is just still in the year 2000. Jeez. Jeez, jeez, it's gonna take a while at this rate. Uh, pretty sure we had it going faster yesterday, didn't we? Minute to minute. For th oh, I think what we did yesterday is we did hour to hour. So uh, let me kill that. Because for the whole century, minute to minute is going to take 520, 50 million rows is what we're going to end up getting. We don't want that. So actually, let me go ahead and fix this. This is going to be delta of 3600. So it's still going to be more than uh, 525,600 or whatever. Uh, but it should be less than um, less than infinity. It should be less than 50 million, so we should be okay. Um, so I'm glad I watched that, otherwise I would have just sat here waiting for it. Yep -do -do. Okay, and there it looks like we're doing actually pretty well. We're already into the, I don't know what this number is, but it looks like we're into the, uh, oh wow, 2012. So we got 12 years going there. Okay, so of course, this is going to be the, uh, the the full data, then we're going to suck out the uh, declination data. Um, and honestly, if there's a mistake this time, we can, of course, just ignore the... Oh, shiny. Exit 1 does not look good. Um, and I, I get the feeling I'm just being playing too fast and loose with the... Um, wait. This is stupid. We're not going to put in the background this time. We're going to use a very large delta. Uh, 10 hours, 100 hours, 1,000 hours. 10,000 hours is more, more than a year. Okay, so we got as far as... Oh, good. It doesn't print out coordinates in star date fashion. So we got as far as 2037. I'm getting fucking annoyed because we did this, and it seems to have worked, unless... I wonder if putting in uh, early, putting a date here that's within the ITRF frame reference might have been a mistake. So what if I just said, actually I probably don't care about the past. That, I should not say that. That is, that has bad implications. I do care about the past, but for this particular program, maybe I don't. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, so that jump step is enough to put it to 2038. Okay, okay, I think I see where we're going with this, actually. Um, and I think I see how to fix it. So I'm trying to find the, where the end of ITRF-93 is because it forces it to use something other than ITRF-93. Uh, but of course, the end of... 90, sorry, 2025, it's got to be then, right? 
it's actually mentioned somewhere, so I could, I don't have to binary search it, I could just actually hard code it if I could find it, but I'm too lazy to do that. Okay. So maybe... What the hell do I have to put here to get this fixed? Uh, let's see if at 2037, maybe it has to be bigger than uh, the thing it's complaining about. Ooh, yo mama. Okay. So now if I do it 2038, it might work because that is beyond the, the time that um, ITRF 93 can reference. If this doesn't work, I'll be surprised. Whoa. Oh, maybe I have to go one, because 2038 is probably when it ends. I kind of get the feeling it ends when Unix time ends, um, which is sometime in the year 2018. Uh, but... Okay, so the fact that it was able to get actually one of these things out on the date... Tw oh, what? I remember trying to go 2040 and having it work, so if this is, this is the problem. If this doesn't work, I'm going to cry like a little girl, and then we're going to look at other solutions. Such as crying like a little boy. Where, 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 where? That's actually not how little girls cry. It's actually kind of hard to. <laughs> All right, it's enough. Okay. So I guess the question is. What the fuck did I do earlier that worked? Hang on, did I get. Did this work? No, because I uh, did. That's the one that failed. Um, that's shiny. That's too shiny. Okay. Wait, did I forget to put a frame Eclipse J two thousand? Fuck. That's why. It's trying to use a frame that I. That's it. What's the default frame? I forgot what my default... Oh! Wait. Hang on. I was under the impression that uh, I did it for all frames all the time, but maybe I do not. Um, so what is the default frame? I'm kind of curious now. Is it J J2000 should work? The only ones that wouldn't work well are Ekeek Date and Eclipse Date. Um, and what's kind of weird here is, um, yeah, it's J2000, that should work. But what's kind of weird here is I actually end up computing all of them. Oh, maybe I don't. It's, it's good that I know what the hell I'm doing, because I, I really don't. I could have sworn this is a for loop now, right? I just go through all the frames. Um... Why would that make a difference? I mean, I'm not going to care too much about that as long as it works. Fuck. Now, the only thing I'm thinking is, do I use BC any dump or BC any dump two? Let's take a look. Maybe it does work for BC any dump. sworn I did some other stuff in there. Did any of these work? I remember this working. I could actually go back in the video fucking thing and find where it worked. Uh, Alright, let's look at our history backwards. Those I know didn't work because th when I started doing the... Okay, so this is good. This is good. Of course, we're using screen, so this might not have a full history. Uh, brilliant. Um, so all the working examples are gone. All right. All right. 
so let me do this. I think we found that it did work. Uh, I'm sorry, we actually want to leave this as 30, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Start 2040. And because I'm pretty sure I got 2040 to 2070 working. Um, and if that's the case, I hate my life. And if this doesn't work, then we, we actually have inconsistency, which I don't like. Yep. Uh, oh, hang on. This should have no effect on it. Is it any dump that actually the one I want? Wow. No, that can't be right. Okay, hang on. I actually have output. Uh, Mars 1. Okay. This went from... Well, this actually died also, but it died sort of in a nice way. Come on. Oh, that actually did what it's supposed to do. Okay, so we started this one at a date of 2021. This wasn't today's, though. And ended it at a date of... Does not look correct. Oh, actually, I just cut and paste the wrong thing. Hang on. The end of 2021. So that apparently worked fine. Hmm. So let's try it with those parameters. If it doesn't work, we have literal inconsistency occurring. And we will put a lower limit on the um, on delta here. So if this doesn't work... Oh, fuck, no, 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 don't do that. Also, I have no idea how my fingers work. It's quite sad, actually. Alrighty, so we'll do this. The end is going to equal... Whatever the hell it was, this, the delta is going to equal one day. Well, one day is probably too much, but anyway, we'll do it. Okay, hang on. So we need to definitely write this down. Um, so yes, this works. Um, and this is from 20 to 21, okay. So now, let's fuck with these numbers. We don't even need to be really that accurate. We can just, um, because I know there's like 30 million seconds. Hang on, this is... Uh, so if we move this up to 167, that's like a year later. I probably should have multiplied the delta, but whatever. Um, it's up to 170. Move this up to 175, a little bit more. 180. I kind of get the feeling now that the first parameter might be the one that breaks. Nope. 190. Now we're really, we're really cranking it quite a bit. This is actually, I think, an increase of 100 million. Okay. 200. And then we're going we're gonna to keep cranking you until you stop working. Hang on. That was kind of interesting. It stopped for a second. Yeah, that might have been nothing. After this, I'm going to check to see how far ahead I am. Okay, we're in the year 2065. I mean, okay, we can, let's push a little bit further. Nothing. Let's go to the year. I'm kind of 
curious which where we are. We should be past 2100 by now, but I could be wrong. Yep, we're almost past 2100. Uh, this should be the one that breaks it. Okay, but that's a complaint about something different. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the one that worked. Oh, sorry. The one that worked. And write it down as a working example. Oh shit, this is BCD dump. I meant BCD dump too. Fuck. Okay. Fuck, fuck, fuck. So that wasn't actually useful to put down BCD dump working. We already knew that it was going to work. Alrighty. I F that up. So let's just go from 2020 to 20. I want to see something. Did I yesterday actually use the wrong thing? No, this is BCD dump too. How about yesterday when it actually worked? That looks like BC anyone do, and we actually have parameters that worked. So let's use those. Because we actually do memorize our parameters. <coughs> oh, hang on. Was this the one that actually ends in badness? Let's see. I think it might be actually the one that, yeah. So it goes as far as... So in theory, but we already showed this doesn't work. In theory, if I use a lower number here, this should work. And it did. Okay. Now we're cooking with something. Okay, so this is working. So it might just be that if we um, go beyond 2037, the weird thing is if we start beyond 2037, I think it's all also okay. We just can't cross 2030, the, the date that is the end of, uh, let's do this. Okay. That's your start date and your end date's gonna be just that plus 3 million, 30 million. I don't even care anymore. Okay. All right. Okay. So the problem here is that we don't have Earth orientation data uh, the way this thing needs it uh, beyond 2037, which means that this thing loads a different kernel. Um, actually, I'm sure it does. Then BC any dump because that does work, um, which uses the same kernel. Okay, Pomodoro time, and I'm going to take it this time back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are back. Okay. Not making me terribly happy. 
Oh, I know what's wrong. The difference here is BC any dump will go through every single possible frame. Um, except Altaz. Um, hmm. Okay, hang on. That's vaguely interesting, so I get the feeling I actually ignore that. So I think there's a point down here where I actually try to get all of them. Um, so here I'm going through all the frames. Oh, that's right. I don't even bother with the names of the frames anymore. Okay, this is the problem. Uh, we're basically going through every frame. Um, and it can get the data for some frames, but not others. So this was my brilliant idea. Why don't we just print it out in all frames? And the answer to that question is because some frames, like ekeek date and eclipse date, are very hard to compute outside of a uh, given time frame. So this is where, and that breaks the whole program. So not cool. I don't even think this is used anymore. I don't think the, the variable frame is even used anymore. So there it is. There's frame z, which is used. Um, yeah, and for, I, you know what? I think this tries. Okay, so that is the problem. I'm going to mention that as a big to do here. Computing all frames for all times doesn't work. Some frames are time limited. Okay. That took forever. So now let's go back to BC any dump, um, which is stupid, but works. So, you know, that, that's a slight advantage that it has. Okay, let's go ahead and remove all the Mars crap that we already had. Yep, 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 yep. Make sure I got them all. Okay. All right. BC any dump. And I don't think these orders are relevant here. Eclipse J2000 minus my ID equals 499. Minus minus start equals um, that. That was really very very bad of me, by the way. I, I suck. And minus minus end equals. In this case, I do think we can actually go to twenty one hundred at one. It's not going to be a problem. And I might subtract four, sixty from. Nah, I'm just leave it the way it is. No, I'm going to say I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm not. Okay. And the delta is going to be every hour. Now I want to make sure this actually starts out okay. Okay, good. Um, <coughs> yeah, by the way, uh, ET0 is 64 seconds before noon because of uh, leap seconds, but also it's not at midnight. So you see the times at midnight are, are going there. Okay. Let's call this Mars 1. That is a very, very bad error. It took a long time and it was just very simple that this uh, BCNE dump 2 tried to be so smart, let's go ahead and start this, uh, tried to be so smart um, that it tried to, uh, um, that it tried to compute all the frames uh, when only some frames were computable, at, at times when some frames were computable. Very, very bad. Okay, so this should um, come out nicely here. Okay, now there's a little bit of a glitch here. They, they, we have some header lines we don't want, but that's probably okay. Um, and now we have comma separated values, uh, of which the first three are all time, by the way. Then we have right ascension, and then we have declination. So I think we might finally get what we want. Um, so F comma, so we'll use this print dollar sign F, zero, one, two, four. But again, we are going to test this. And if this does work, we will also get rid of the um, nah, yeah, ecliptic latitude is what we want. Okay, no, hang on. And let's make sure there's nothing, no crap at the end, although there might be... Oh, good, no crap at the end. Uh, so head minus... No, tail minus n plus 2, which I think is incorrect. I think we need one more after that. Yep. Uh, and this will go directly into temp mars 2. And that should only take a fraction of a second. Okay. And this should now be... 
176,600 hours. That is actually the correct length of our century. Now, how many, how many minutes have I wasted, including the uh, 38 minutes? That's not too bad, actually. Um, and now we can go into Julia. Julia, this is not the right song. Oh, and we still only have one file called README, and I'm okay with that for, for right now. Um, and let's see. I keep kind of just, I mean, this is safe to get, so it's not going to go away. Uh, but I kind of don't like doing that. But you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. And so I think this is temp. Is it, do we actually end up naming it temp Mars 2? Hubba hubba text instead of, uh, CSV, but I think that's what, we, wow, like literally what we did before. Um, literally what we forgot to import our packages first. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. This is kind of a pain in the ass. It's taking so long. It, this should not be that difficult. Um, okay. Okay. Now we should be able to do this. It's going to be a pretty big data file. Uh, well, we just looked how big it was. Almost a million um, rows. Even on a VM, though, Julia, I trust Julia so fast and wonderful. This is going to work. Wow. <laughs> I would do, actually didn't mean that. Uh oh. Okay, because it's a data frame. Now, this should just grab us the declinations. And damn, that was fast. Yeah, probably shouldn't be doing that. That's not bad at all. So now I should be able to plot this. And I keep always not doing the right way of plotting. So let's do this. Plots. Plot. And I don't need to add to an existing plot. I wonder if I can put a semicolon after this. Because this is actually... The plot is the, the output of this, so. And this should show like a very sinusoidal pattern uh, for Mars's declination with a few maybe reverses because Mars does have retrograde motion. Um, and this I'm not surprised takes it. We're plotting roughly a million points here on a VM. So, crap, I think that uh, putting a semicolon actually does suppress the plot. Uh, so let's do this. Which is kind of consistent, but at the same time, it's a different kind of output. And there you have it. Mars's declination... Ecliptic latitude, by the way. If I say declination, I mean ecliptic latitude. Uh, and again, this is... Hang on one second here. This is... Garbage coming up on my screen. Okay, sorry. Different screen that you can't see. Let's look at that again. Let's look at our beautiful... Fudge. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. Okay, that's close enough. Okay, so you can see here we have a... Um, we don't have any way of manipulating this, but, but this is what the declination of Mars looks like for the century. And this is the hour number, which we do not want. Um, and this is probably not going to be interpolable blah, 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 with, a, um, with any low-degree polynomial. Um, in fact... I'm guessing even a hundredth degree polynomial, I mean, how many of our ups and downs these are, which might be more than a hundred or less than a hundred, won't work. But you know what? That won't stop us from trying. Failure is an option. Okay, so now that we've plotted this, we should be able to do a... Um, now, one thing I kind of want to do uh, is reset the range here because... Um, like I said, the cubic function, even square functions, blow up a lot with large numbers. So we want to remap the range as we did here. I guess. Yo mama. Okay, hopefully this will work. Um, from minus one to one. So let's see what count one is. God damn it. And then count length count minus one instead of minus one. Oh, sorry, count let count. Beautiful. 
So now we can do a plot from minus 1 to 1. Um, this is not going to be any different than the previous one, except it's the, uh, the x-axis is now going to be from minus 1 to 1. Plus, if we need to plot more stuff, we're going to keep this plot up and running. Okay, same pattern, same old shit, different scale. Okay, now, because we are not quite ready to put any finality into this, we are going to do polynomial fit, count dex, let's just start with level 3. I mean, it's not going to, um, it, even level 3 is not going to be enough, but, you know, let's just start with that. Oh, what is you mean polynomial not defined? Uh, oh, wait, what? I imported it. Z. Polynomial Z. Not with a Z, but with an S. Not with a Z, but with a Z. Z, Z. I don't think British people say that, though. Okay, so now what we can do here, and this is going to be a very terrible approximation, but we can... Um, this is a function. Minus 1 to 1. And let's see what this does. I have no idea, by the way. Okay. And I need to get rid of this label, but... As you can see, this is a this is a terrible approximation of the data, uh, which is expected, um, just because there's so much up and down here. This is essentially a sine. This is a doubly modified sine wave. It's it's pretty complicated. Okay, but now let's jim jam it up to let's say 25 degrees. Um, crap! I wonder if I can do that without messing up what's on the scale. Uh, so now I want to plot this again, but it has a different view. Oh! Not cool. Apparently, I, I fucked it out of memory. Alright, let's try that again. I'm going to import my packages, and I'm going to read in the data. That actually is not great behavior. Um, dying on a memory error, it should just, like, not do it. And at some point we might, let me put this on our to-do maybe list. Um, because it's not actually that difficult. Um, finding a best fit to a, a line, even of multiple functions, is actually not as difficult as it seems. Provided you use the right metric, whatever the hell that means. Um, provided you use the standard uh, least mean squares thing is what they call it. Come on, they need to read me. Just need to read me. There we go. Okay. Okay, now let me maybe do the 25 a little bit earlier on in the process. And it might be that it's too much data. It might be that it's, it's, it's you know, that is... Um, 25th level is fitting is not easy. I do need to define count first. I do not want to plot yet. Okay. And by the way, we're never really going to try to fit this to a 25th degree polynomial. We're going to... The whole point of this is to break it up into pieces and fit those pieces into polynomials. Let's see what this does. This might have... Oh, wow. Let's take a look at our lovely... 1,350, 25th degree polynomial, looks groovy. This time, let's plot this sucker first, and again, we might, this might not work. Oh, well, that's not the kind of error expected. Let's plot, plot. And by the way, again, the plot is not the important part of what we're doing, oddly enough. Um... So it didn't have trouble plotting the million points, but it might have trouble plotting a 25th degree polynomial, even though it really shouldn't. Um, do that did not like that at all. Um, I wonder if there's any options to give it more memory. Oh, wow. There are options, I didn't know that. Um, 
oh, and instead of having to do the ugly CD, we could have just set the project home directory. Um, oh, you can also push a system image, which might be useful if we want to create a system image that already has the environments that I want loaded up. Um, so signal hand, that's what you get when you run in memory. Um, turn off the banner, which kind of is getting on my nerves. Um, um, limit usage of CPU, that's fine. Where is... It's okay, but each source line. I don't know if I just ran out of memory on the VM, which I can't do anything about. Um, but let's see if we can very quickly, which meaning it'll take forever, uh, give Julia more memory. Okay. Um... Okay, this is not, I want to know about memory. Um, okay, that's not helpful. So that's actually not telling me. Um, Okay, that does know me how to give it more memory. Just give me some tips on how to um, to use memory. So the whoa, whoa, whoa! So it wouldn't. It's actually kind of weird that it would not. Be able to plot a twenty-fifth degree polynomial. It's kind of kind of strange. Let me go ahead and BC get save this real quick. Um. Okay, so I've pushed this to get... Let's, let's lower the degree of the polynomial to maybe 10. Um, and let's... Mm, I was going to say, let's maybe look at um, changing the startup options for Julia. Oh, actually, we don't have a Julia directory. That was for R that I did that. Um, so, import Mars count... We'll go that far. Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a... Hopefully this won't break.
Dun, dun. It's only a 10th degree polynomial. Come on, you can do it. Maybe. Getting concerned. Getting more concerned. Hasn't crashed yet, but hasn't plotted yet either. So we're in that zone there. Wow. That is not good. Let me see if, let me go ahead and lo load this in and see if there's a way to limit the number of points we're trying to plot. Maybe that's the problem. Um, but I mean, that is kind of bad. Uh, that it is that it is failing on something that is so simple. Uh, but okay, we'll take a look. Uh, okay, we've imported our packages. Now we can do this, and apparently it doesn't have a problem computing the polynomial. Look at our beautiful polynomial. Gorgeous. Okay, so let's maybe plot has an option that can limit how many points is being plotted. Hello, all cast full. How's it going, man? How are you doing? Good news. Well, I could use some good news right now. You passed the test. I think you were the guy who had the test. But go ahead and tell me yourself. I think I just stole your thunder there. Awesome. So now. You move on to whatever the next step in whatever you're doing is. That didn't sound sincere at all. It is sincere, the, the retake one. Yes, yes, yes. The one, I remember you told me the one that was uh, programming or something. Code the first time, questions the second time. The one you thought you passed. So it's good that you actually did pass it. Good deal, man. Well, so what what are you moving on to now? Um and while we're waiting, we'll, we'll keep I'll keep talking up a storm here. Um Lots of keyword arguments. Just try it and it will likely work. That is the worst. Uh, let's see what I have to say. X squared from minus 1 to 1 points equals 20. I don't think this will work the way I want it to work. Oh. Freaking... Uh, can I do, I think this is actually acceptable as a function. Oh, wow. I'm impressed. Now, let's see if this, apparently it's going to take forever for some reason. Oh, my God. So this is not, you're not even near the end here. You still have four final exams. This should not be taking this long. And that looks like it used more than 20 points. That well, looks pretty smooth. What if we say point points equals 5? That still looks pretty good. I get the feeling that points isn't doing what I think it's doing. How about points equals one? Let's see you do it with one point. Oh, come on. Okay, I don't think points is having an effect here. If you are close, four final exams is, you know, it, it is it is what it is. Um, to me, I think that's, that's still quite a bit to do there, but... Um, I'm going to try this again, but I get the feeling that um, this is just going to, yep. Wow, that crashed quicker than I thought. <coughs> okay, so we are 
we're kind of stuck to saying that 10 does not work. Uh, so let's go ahead and comment that out so we kind of have a little bit of a knowledge there. Fifth degree probably should work. If that doesn't work, I will be worried. Because, I mean, using fifth degree polynomials, even up to ninth degree, is actually fairly common. Okay, do this. Well, let's actually, let's go ahead and do all of this through here. So, so far, not tremendously impressed with Julia. Um, I don't know it's need so much memory um, for something that simple, but who knows? Okay, twenty assignments and tests, but I mean, I mean, not to not to uh, not to make you <laughs> not to make you nervous, but I, I guess the final exams are kind of the big ones, or is it because of our special situation with Corona that the final exams are not as important as they would be otherwise? Because um, to me, the finals are always like make or break. If you get the final, if you nail the finals, you usually get a good grade in the course. If you don't nail the finals, you usually get a bad grade in the course, uh, regardless of anything else. That's sort of the uh, you know make or break part of it. Okay. So that is our lovely polynomial. And this better work. If this doesn't work, I will be unhappy. So this is a fifth degree polynomial. That's still pretty big, 15 to 30 percent of your grade. So uh, good luck with that. When are you taking the finals and is it going to be online or is it going to be, I guess it's still online, right? People aren't really meeting in person that much now. Yay, oh, it's too, the, oh, maybe that's what's wrong with it. It's too long to put into the uh, the name of into the um, into the string here. Um, so let, let me see if we can do yeah GK a string is too long routine text. Um, and again, this is not going to look anything like our data, but we will plot our data just to see if I can do it actually. Yeah, that's fine. And again, you can see this looks nothing like the wait 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 a minute. Wait just a second here. So this looked like this. And when I added... How the hell did it... Oh, because... Oh, oh I see what's wrong. Because the scale had to change. Um, so again, not a, great, not a great representation of our data. And we don't expect it to be either. Okay, okay. Well, good luck with that. Uh, if you want help studying or anything, if my stream can do anything for you, let me know. If I can do anything for you, let me know. If you want me to take the test for you, the tests for you, I will do it, but uh, just be warned that I sometimes uh, have fun with that kind of thing. So you might not want me to do that. Okay, so again, this is not a great, not, no, no real great um, estimates here. Uh, and we could actually look at the residuals here, but they would be hideously low. Hideously, hideously big. I wonder if there's a way to turn off the plots function without having to close the window. Um, okay, so what is our actual goal here? I, I, I actually forgot. Someone tell me. No. Um, the first thing we actually want to be able to do is uh, split the data into n parts um, and return an array of arrays. I do not know if there's a built-in function for that. Um, if there isn't, we can write one, I hope. I don't exactly know how Julia works. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's take a look at Julia array functions and let's learn something. Maybe. Um, and this, this, this notation is very like C++ or C uh, sharp, I think, so. Um, uh, yeah, we, we know what an array is. That's the array method. I want a me methods in array. Well, actually, hang on. This is a long shot, but can I do... No, I cannot do... Uh, I try to do a tab completion on dex, but that's not going to work. However, that's not going to work either. 
Um, so maybe this is too broad here. I think there's the word split. No. All right, so let's say Julia split array into arrays. Okay. Uh, interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right, so we just need to get the uh, element lengths. What is the view macro? I get the feeling I probably shouldn't be using it. Yeah, I don't have that defined. I'm going to put a three dots here just so if you say anything else, I will not miss it because it'll be in green under my under my little video camera icon. And again, if I can do anything to help, let me know. Um, okay, so what we want to do here is write a function. I think we can do this. We'll call it split array, which will take an array. Now, I forget, do we actually, is this doing like stupid things here? I don't think we need this, unfortunately. So, oh, that's not what I want. Um, we're going to set len equal to array to, I guess, length of array. It's a function. Is it actually also a... Yeah, okay. It is length. Uh, I don't know if I need a semicolon here. I'll put one here because I like them. But, um, oh, actually, array and the number of chunks you want to split it into. Um, C len meaning chunk length is going to be len over n, and we want to f do a fl fl floor on that. Yeah, a round or a floor? A floor. Um, let me just see if this is a function. I, I probably screwed this up somehow. So, oh, here you are. All right, well, go have fun taking a shower or whatever, whatever it is you do in the shower. I don't really want to know. Um, all right, talk to you later. Have fun. Ooh, that worked. I mean, right now it's just going to return the uh, C length because that's the last thing computed. And that actually is probably not a good number of chunks to split it into. Um... Okay, uh, let me go ahead and save this to git because it is crap. Okay, and now let's see what we're going to do here. So what we want to do is kind of like a for loop here. We've got to be careful because we are, we need to create what's called a return array. Not so that is what it is, it's a return array. So we need to do this, then we need like a push function. Um, So ST is going to be the start of the array. It will be one to begin with. Um, okay. And now here's where we're going to go into our while loop. Um, can I do this as a for loop? I'm almost sure I can. Um, Let's see. I mean, it's basically in integer division len divided by clen. Um, uh, and then um, round up. So... Actually, let's see if we can do it as a while loop, just, just for learning while loops. While in Julia do. Control flow. Okay. So 
go down here to while in four. Okay. So what I really want here is while start is less than length. Now the weird thing here is they don't seem to like parentheses, which is annoying. Um, is push a method for arrays? I think it is actually. Um, array push? Okay, let's just do an apropos push. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure there are those push pop and all that good stuff in here in the language. Um, base is not the kind of thing I want to be pushing on. Oh, oh, base might be actually, um, yeah, actually this might be what I need. Um, I knew I had to do that. Okay. Oh, shit. Being fuck. I do have, uh, apparently I do have, um, UTF-8 turned on, but I think. Jesus fuck, what does this do? Apparently a hell of a lot. Okay. So now can I do, let's see what dex looks like. Oh, actually I don't want to see what dex looks like. We're gonna call it test equals one, two, three, four. Uh, can we do this? Array has no field push. Oh no, wait. That's what I meant. Nice. So what we wanna do here is, oh actually we need to figure out, um, the ending field is gonna be the starting field plus the ceiling minus one, however, um, if n is greater than len, um, then n is equal to let end. Um, and then so what we want to do is push onto this, um, the subarray of whatever the hell, oh wow, that was fun, um, array start to end, and then we want to increment st uh, st equals um, plus c. Bit. We want it to be the next. This is probably not the most efficient way of um, of writing this. This was actually probably not a even an efficient way of writing this program, um, and it probably won't work. So that my inefficiency is probably counteracted by the fact that it. Whoa, that said, it's going to work. All right, Pomodoro time. We'll see if it works in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are back. Um, okay, I thought there was, it is range, right?
Okay, yes, but I wanted it as a list. <sighs> Go from 1 to 100 in steps of 1. Whoa! Oh, I forgot I can't do that. Length of this. Okay, I guess if I do this, actually. Um, T1422, this is bad because I'm not writing it down. Now, if I show it, it should show up as a fuck you no. Um, what if I do this? Oh, is it type? That's not actually what I wanted, though. Hang on one second. I'm pretty sure I did ranges in Julia, and they actually worked. So if I ask, is count just a range? It is just a range. Um, is there, is there such a thing as show? Mm, no. Okay. So really, I could add stuff to count and it wouldn't matter. Um. Alright, let's try split array. Count into 15 pieces. Invalid index one of type float 36. So apparently I'm not allowed to use a st standard has to be, ST has to be, um, um, I guess this will fix it, but I mean, has to be of type int, apparently. Holy fuck. Let's try this. Mm, doesn't like that. Okay. Um, in fact, it doesn't like it right here, so... I mean, I could do this. Say st is an integer. Let's see if that helps. Uh, it would probably... No, I did it inside of a function. Is that not how you declare an int? Oh, that is not how you declare an int, apparently. Um. Okay. So I think what it's complaining about is that the array index has to be an integer. ST not defined. Okay, that's not, that's clearly not what I'm trying to do then. Um, I guess one thing that would be useful to know is what is start and end here. Uh, as you pull this in. Would have been neat to just to, yeah. Uh, in okay. Okay, that that's interesting. It did print the end number there, so I guess you cannot have arguments of type float. Um, well, let's see how you cast an integer. Uh, all right, let's apropos cast. Um, broadcast is not not what I want. Uh, parent module name of uh, so none of that's what I want. Um, let's do typing. Okay, that's way too much. Int maybe. Jur maybe. Okay. Ah. Uh. Conversion and promotion, which sounds way deeper than just casting. Um, 
Okay, so that's not too bad. We can just say st is int1, and will that keep it an integer from then on? And if not, we can fix that. I'm going to say split array count into 15 pieces. Int not defined. Okay, is it because... Okay. I was, I was just hoping. Um... Okay, this doesn't look too bad, actually. Convert int uh, s. What is s? Can't do that. Uh, okay, let's see what happens if we do this. s is equal to 15.4. Convert int s. In exact error. I mean, we do lose precision. Well, that might not be... An, let me do this real quick. What if it was already? Oh, very nice. Okay. So it'll, only if it has decimals, it's going to get confused. So this is going to be... I don't know why I need to do a convert here. Int 1. Uh, but I guess because I don't, I'm don't, i not really setting types or anything. But still. Split array. Okay. Okay, if I do this, what is st? What is the type of st? That looks fine. Um, so what happens? That should not be an issue. All right. So we're going to cheat, as always. Let's just look at array of st. So if that's if it's broken, it's going to break there now. Okay, that's not what I expect. Oh no, that is fine. Minus one point oh. So maybe it's like, um, so this is fine. This prints, I probably should be printing out some new lines too, just to make my life easier. Let's see if that works. Actually, that's going to break because of different reasons. Print deck 17, followed by a new line. Okay, good deal. Um... Okay. Yes, I'm going to misspell alpha on purpose. So we're going to do this here, and then we're going to do it again. And see, I get the feeling that um, it's actually en that's broken, because that's where it's unhappy. But just a, a fucking hell. Don't do that. Um... I don't know why I did that. That's not uh, helpful either, but okay. Okay, alpha... Alpha minus... So it's fine there. I, it's almost sure it's the ending that's that's going to be unhappy with. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, N equals convert this to an int, although it already is one. We might as well not have semicolons... Was that it? Was that semicolon that broke? No, it shouldn't be that. Okay. All right, let's do this. Let's see if that works. Um, well, now it's complaining about the right thing, at least. Invalid argument. And this actually... Um, Interesting. I'm going to go ahead and bc git save this because it has some 
negative value or something. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of this crap here. I don't think ST is the problem. In fact, I don't think ST was ever the problem, so I'm not going to even bother doing this, which is ST is equal to 1. Um, I don't think semicolons are the problem. Um, God, this looks weird. But let's go ahead and do this. Start, space, ST, new line, end, space, EN, new line, or H line. And now, see, I get the feeling that's, that's what's causing the problem is is EN, actually, because I, I, the way I define it, it might not be very immediately clear that it's... Okay. Well, that's where the problem is. It's not the first time, it's the... does feels like the first... Okay, so what happens here is... So apparently, RET gets something in it. Um, Alright, well, this is not a difficult problem to solve. Although C length is also an integer, so it's, not, it's a little bit confusing to me as to why this happens. But hey. Now that is what I call a thing of beauty. I mean, technically. Technically, <laughs> I just split the range into 15 parts, so that's not very exciting. But still, kind of interesting. Um, I actually meant to, of course, split the um, the array declinations into 15 pieces. Fortunately, I get the feeling that this um, the non-infinite printing saved me. So... Nice. So... Oh, actually, hang on. I do need to make sure of something. Um, the ninth element should not be Ooh, 10th element? Ooh, now I'm confused. How big is this thing? I, I said split it. Oh, 15. I said 15, not. not. Um, okay. 15, 58, 40, 14. Okay, so now the problem is if this is a. Did I actually literally happen to choose something that was a. Yep. No! No, 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 no. Okay. So we're missing a portion of the uh, the very last element. Um, okay. Let's do that array split again. I don't know why I'm doing it with huge... Um, actually, let me see if I'm splitting the... Um, that again. Now, see, that works fine. And I wonder, this is just fucking weird. Oh, it does work, bizarrely. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this to get, because it is working, and then I'm going to get rid of the start and end. Actually, maybe I shouldn't get rid of the start and end, because this is telling me... Okay, that's what I want. The end should be this. Okay, so why when I do this... Uh, well, partly because I flood out my, um, uh, because I don't suppress the output. But anyway, um, I get the feeling that maybe just by mistake I put it, um, okay. So in this case now, did I assign it to something? I did not. So in this case now, T1436 uh, should have 15 elements, because that's what I asked for. Okay, that might be acceptable because... Um, and then the, the length of the 17th element should be the same as the length of the others, but the 18th one should be shorter. Oh, well, that, that is shorter. And that is because f there's a remainder when you multiply this by 17. You still need to add 12 to get to the full number. Okay, that's that's what I wanted. Except, do I want 17 to actually mean 18? I mean, it's not a huge deal. Um, uh, 
Uh, let's see. And I can fix it by just reducing. Um, uh, actually, what can I fix it with? Over here by taking n minus one. But I'm not actually sure I want to do that. I kind of kind of okay with just leaving it the way it is. Okay. So we have this lovely function split array. At some point, we will definitely have to start putting these into uh, arrays and stuff, uh, into fo individual files and stuff. And we do not need the print line anymore. Okay. So what do we do with these things once we have? So let's uh, now let's actually start doing some stuff here. A split array dex. Uh, I'm going to split into a hundred. Let's put it in 99 pieces just to be annoying, because that means the last piece won't be the same length. First of all, this last should be 100 pieces. Um, but the 100th piece will not be the same size, which is okay. Uh, that That's that's like a corner case. And the rest of them should also be gorgeous. Now, what I want to do over each of these pieces is do a polynomial interpolation. Um, so basically, I want to map polynomials fit. Um, uh, let's count. Okay, that might be that might be worth the function actually. Uh, let's see. It's definitely worth the function. Okay. Um, list to, uh, uh, okay, list to normal poly, which means you take the list, you pretend that the range of the list is minus one to one, and you put it into, and you give it a polynomial interpolation. Um, I'll call it normal poly, because normal is one way of saying of length one in my, um, so the only thing we actually need is the degree of the polynomial. Oh, no, sorry, we need the list, actually. That would be kind of nice to have. <laughs> we need the list, and then we need the degree of the polynomial. So what we want here is, um, let's see, we need to define this. Uh, and we can reuse counts because it's, it's inside of a function now. And it's going to be the length of the array, minus 1. Okay. And then we just need, oh, this might be easier than it looks. Polynomial fit count the array that we're sent in and the degree that we're sent in. And that's actually literally it. Pomodoro time back in two and two.
almost back. And we are back, but I want to see how long I've been streaming, just because one and a half hours. We can go for a little bit more. Probably stop at about two hours. Okay. So if that's the whole... I, I find it difficult to believe that this is actually going to work. But, you know. Interesting. So now, if we give it the list... Hmm. Someone I said. Oh shit, I keep forgetting you can't do that. Uh, length of this should be 50. Okay, that's not cool at all. Uh, range 1 to 100. Step equals 2. Maybe I, maybe they do that differently. Oh, okay, okay. And that has a length of hopefully 100. Um, oh no, 50, because that's what I wanted. Okay, so now, if I do, by the way, it's obviously a line, so it's going to be a first degree polynomial, we'll split it, I'm going to tell it to use normal poly, um, of this being your first argument, an array, and your second argument being degree 3. Um... And that does look like 50 plus 50 times, oh, cause, right, because it's going from minus 1 to 1, plus the terms in x squared and x, uh, I wonder if the function chop works. I'm almost sure it doesn't. A uh, chop would get rid of small terms. No. But there is a chop. I don't know what the hell it does. Oh, that just gets rid of... Um, characters from the string. Okay, that's not a problem. Okay, so uh, this does work. Um, now I need to map this over the 100 pieces, and I still can't quite do a pure map because there's an extra argument here uh, that I need to set. Um, so map, list to normal poly, which we'll have to phrase in some... Oh, actually, hang on. Um degree 3 into the little pieces that I've created. So this should actually give me a list of one, no, 99 polynomials. Uh, I've got 99 polynomials, uh, but the linear polynomial isn't one. Shiny! I didn't actually expect that to work. Um, I could probably plot all one... Now, they're not going to plot, like, the way you would want them to plot, because, um... Actually, I'm not sure they're going to plot at all. Let's see if they plot. Yeah, plot, plot. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think I can plot... Th I mean, I can plot one of them. Here's the fourth one. Yeah. Now, of course, what I really care about here is um, how well it matches the data that we had. Um, so I could do this. I could actually do it in this function if I wanted to. Um, I could map the polynomial that we just got, which by the way I don't assign a name to, uh, which is fine because I'm returning it, but let's see. And then map it over the, uh, the, the list, the array, uh, no, map it over uh, the range plotted at... This is actually interesting. Um, okay. Okay, so map it over count, and I would expect to get the array back. Is what I'm saying. Hmm... I mean, roughly speaking. So, let's go ahead and assign this a name, even if we don't use it. Poly. Okay, then. Map poly over count. So that should give us our list back. Minus array. I'm actually kind of curious what that does. And 
and then uh, I am actually very curious about this. Okay, I guess these are residuals technically. Um, oh, this is a very small. Uh, there's very few points here, so it's a pretty good residual. These residuals are not as good. These residuals are really fucking high, actually. Higher than I would expect. What the? Okay, hang on. Um, I actually should be able to do this. Uh, let's just use... This one is uh, 94. I guess maybe I don't actually know what, what it is we'll just we'll just say count versus oh I can't do that um, because I need to um, let's try this though um, I think I can still work this uh, let's use the 90th element of this and just see what that looks like I probably need to figure out a better way of doing it. So this is what the uh, the array looks like, going from 0 to 8,000. Hmm. Yes, the problem here, of course, is... is if I, I can plot... Um, I can plot T1445... I mean, that, this is going to be the polynomial that lines up with it. What the hell? That's not what I wanted. Oh, shit, because now this is actually re returning um, the, the residuals. Wee, I fucked myself over. Okay. Yeah, I definitely need to start organizing this information here but okay so now <laughs> I've redefined it oh no sorry now I need to do this again yeah this is this is not good okay now t14 there we go that's and I can certainly plot this from minus one to one but the problem is um, and add it to this plot but the problem is it's the range is gonna be wrong um, That's actually worse than I thought it would be, but, but I mean, it, it goes between zero and one, so you can't really see it. Um, okay. So we can do a little bit of cleanup here. Actually, I think maybe we should not have this do all of this as well. That might be going too far. Um, and I think at this point we need to start learning how to... Um, to load in a given uh, a given file at runtime and then bring up the terminal, um, and so we can sort of uh, we might actually want to be able to save images uh, because this is time consuming here. Well, sorry, this is time consuming here. So let's take a quick look at what images are because that might be actually really useful. Oh. Imaj, Imag. That's the one I want. Um, okay, let's see if we can do Julia save image, because they, they were talking about images, and it would be really nice to have an image that has all of our packages in it. Oh. Unless this, by image, it means a picture, which m might be... Oh, fuck. It is. It's not an image of state. Um... Okay, this is actually good. It's a feature request. Let's see if it's actually gotten anywhere. Um, okay. Um, allow 
I'll precompile. Okay. Well, that didn't look like it didn't happen. Um, dump is the v is the value Mathematica uses. Let's see if there is a dump. Okay, so dump doesn't do what we want. It just sort of dumps out, which is does something useful, but it's just not. Now this guy did recommend a package called JLD or something. Let's see what this piece of shit does. Saving and loading Julia variables while preserving native types. Let's see what this is. This is, does not sound like what we need. Um, this saves variable values, which could be useful. Um, because it does take a while to load in some of this crap. Um, but it does not apparently save the packages that have been loaded. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. Um, now, of course, I'm on a VM, so in theory I could literally save the state by saving the VM. Um, uh, sys image? Revise. Okay, I don't think this image is going to be what I want. <coughs> so it was requested in um, 2017, and yeah, this is actually going to be. I don't want to save variables. I actually want to save loaded pack. Well, actually, let's see if we can do that. Julia save um, imported save state with imported pa this is not gonna no. um, yeah I think this is probably not gonna do what I want oh that's interesting what is I, Julia? It sounds very much like iPad. Um, I get the feeling that I, Julia, is not what I want. It's going to bring up ugly graphic thingies. Is it capital I, Julia? Okay, apparently if you don't load it, it's not going to get anywhere. Um, oh, is it? Did I do this right? No, it's capital I, capital J, Julia, but even then, it doesn't know about it. Okay, I don't know what this bullshit Jupiter stuff is. It's, I've heard a lot of people talk about it, so... Um, uh, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I guess it's like Doc... Nah, probably not even like Docker. I have no idea what it's going to be like. Okay, so now let's see if we can mess with Julia and get it to actually load up stuff. Uh, at startup, and uh, so you know, let's actually get some. Uh, technically, I've got to do this as bclib jl because all my libraries are in the main directory, and all this one's going to do is well, actually, let's just start with having to do this. So basically, I want to start Julia with this directory, this file, and then have it bring up a terminal. So that should not be too difficult. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, version help, project directory. Let's go ahead and make a uh, project directory. And let's go there. Okay. So let's work our way up to a command line here um, on README Street. And then we might alias it. Julia minus project equals home user Julia. So all our crap will be kept there. Uh, let's go ahead and do back to man. Okay, so what is what is given system image file? Okay, this this might be the thing I was looking for earlier. Um, sys image option. What does that do? 
Pre-power system image contain. Okay. Okay. Doesn't tell me how to create one. Let's let's put that on the to-do list here. Look at Julia system images option command line option to see if I can load faster. Okay, let's go back over here now. Um, set the location of the Julia. That's not a problem. Startup file. That's a yes or no. That's not a, um, do I have a startup file? Am I allowed to mess with it? No, I do not have a startup file. So it might be that the startup file uh, could be the thing that is the library, or could load the library. Handle signals, evaluate an expression. On all process. What does that mean? That okay, I'm gonna try that. Minus L. Is it minus minus something? Minus minus load. Uh, I guess if you're doing minus minus, they want spaces. I don't know why. Uh, home user bc git bc lib jl. Okay. And then I do want minus I. For right now, I'm not going to turn off the banner, but let's see what this does. I get the feeling this is not going to do what I want. Or not necessarily even bother to, uh, to run properly. Okay, could not open file home user Julia. And I get the feeling I need more equal signs there. Sometimes, I, cause I think this is how you're supposed to do um, double hyphen options. Now, yeah, let's see what this does. It is taking a while, which might just be the import, which is actually not great. Um, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Okay, we are almost back. And we're back. So now if plots plot is defined and it does something, that means that the uh keep forgetting this is a pure function. But the 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 problem wasn't with the plots function. It was with um with what I was trying to plot. So this takes forever. Am I doing something really terrible here? Eh, it's not that bad. Okay, so it did load the, the, the libraries. So this would work. Probably other ways to do it. Um... 
You know, the question is, could it also load more than one file? Um, not a huge deal if it can't. Actually, the other question is, can it load files? Okay, I think I'm going to finally create a uh, file for this, bcmarsdeck.jl. So the question is, can I load in this file um, another file? So can I just do... This is kind of redundant, but let's see if it works. Okay, load is not default, not log. That is weird. The fact that I type that by default. Load path, download, unsafe load, float, 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 float. Uh, let's do apropos load. Um, include maybe the thing I'm looking for. Oh. Okay. Of course, I have no idea if that worked because I already had it loaded. But what if I just do this, Julia? And then I do an include. Takes a while. Does look like it's going to work. Let me write that down, actually. Let's do this. So it does look like we're... Pr this takes way too long, though. That's not, I'm not happy about that. Okay, so it does look like you can do include, so that might just be um, an easy way to uh, to load a file. Now, actually, can we do even simpler than that? Because we're trying to get it to where we can do it like uh, we do... Um, uh, like we did Maxima or Mathematica. So can I actually just do this? Again, I mean, it looks like it's working. The question is, will it just do that and end, or will it bring me into a REPL, which is what I want to be brought into a REPL. Okay, that did not work, but how about if I do this? I want it interactive, and I want you to start by loading the sucker. I'm getting lazy. When I get lazy, I don't type spaces. And again, time is definitely a concern here. Um, I, I don't know exactly what's causing it to slow down this much. Or if this is just a Julia's normal speed. Okay. So it does look like there's many ways of doing it. I'll go ahead and write this Julia minus I down. Many, many ways to start Julia with the way we want. Um, and that could help us create an alias that just basically um, lets us put formulas into a Julia um, work file, just load those formulas. Uh, and be done with it. Okay, so not too bad at all. Okay, let's see how we are in the stream. Let's see if we want to be special. Okay, we're one and a half minutes away from the, the two-hour uh, mark. And for some reason, I just like saying, I just spent two hours streaming, <laughs> as though it's special in some way. Uh, excuse me. Uh, let's see. So apparently there is a way to uh, build new system images, but it's not an easy way to do it. Um, so now we've got our like split going, we've got our polynomial fitting going, and I think with a little bit of work we'll be able to get our uh, residuals working uh, so we can um, find out what the uh, difference is between the 
the estimate and the real values, and then by tweaking the uh, order of the polynomial and the number of times we split, hopefully, hopefully, uh, get something that we can put into JavaScript so we can plot planetary positions on top of a map that I haven't created yet. That is pretty, um, we're pretty deep in the boonies here. Um, all right, if there's anyone in chat that wants to say hi, I'm going to basically try to kill this uh, the you know instant we go over two hours, uh, which will be probably by the time I finish talking. Uh, we have 13 seconds, and I don't know why I'm doing this. It's uh, because of the... This is just what OBS tells me the time is, which is different from uh, the time that Twitch will necessarily tell me, or even YouTube, uh, once I try to convert it from Twitch to YouTube. Um, and all that babbling has put us just over two hours. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm not sure if I'll be back today.